What is up you guys? It's Erin. Welcome back. We are here with a very exciting video that I've been looking forward to filming for the whole month of December and I'm finally getting to filming it. It is my makeup favorites for 2021. I tried a lot of new makeup this year and it was really hard to pick but I mostly kept it to one maybe two products per category besides maybe lips and eyes but I think that's pretty understandable because those are really you know fun categories where it's fun to switch it up. I can't wait to talk to you about all my 2021 favorites but before we get into it make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel hit that little post notification bell so you are notified of all my end of the year videos. I have a couple more exciting videos coming up so make sure you tune on in and let's just get into my favorites. I have my iPad notes app. I have a little pen I write with here that I have written down all my favorite products and I might have snuck a few more in there but what I did was I went through and looked at my 2020 favorites and I think except for one thing there are no repeats at all I wanted to make sure it was things I either rediscovered this year or I um, purchased and tried out for the year because um, the products that I loved in 2020 still stand but I just I think it's redundant to have repeat products and I want to talk to you about new products that I really fell in love with this year so everything is new minus one product another way i refresh my memory i have a note on my notes app on my iphone where i kept a running tab throughout the entire year of all the pr i received and all the purchases i made in any beauty category just because i try so much stuff that things can get lost things can get forgotten about and there's definitely things in there that I had to be reminded that I got this past year. But for the most part, I knew what my favorites were off the top of my head. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't leave anything out because I have an entire room, if you're not aware, of beauty products. So things get lost in here. Alright, but I will be done blabbing now and get into the makeup. I am just going to go in order of how I apply my makeup because that's kind of how my thought process works. And I'll try not to be too long on each product because I have a lot of products to get through. Starting with brows. Now this is a more recent two products that I fell in love with. But the Kosas brow products are so, so good. The Air Brow which is the little tinted brow gel. And the Brow... I always forget the name of this. The Brow Pop is the pencil. These are kind of basic, but really, really good, and I'm in love with like the clear packaging. I've talked about these before. The Brow Pop is just a basic pencil. Um, it has like, a, I would say a medium sized tip. It's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's not too creamy, it's not too dry where it's really hard to get on. It has a spoolie on the other end. It's just perfect, it's a perfect brow pencil. And then I really, really love the Air Brow, which is the gel. Um, this, has a really nice size small spoolie that does not get too much product on it that I have to be concerned about wiping off product. It disperses through my brows and coats the hairs without getting goopy because I have really thin brow hairs and that's something I have to worry about with tinted brow gels because sometimes they just don't look natural on my brows. But this really does and it holds my brows in place without being crunchy. But just keep in mind that I do not mind if my brows are not absolutely glued like laminated in place throughout the day that's just not something i care about having really thin brows so i don't know if you would love this because it's definitely not going to give you like that glued brow kind of vibe that's just not going to move but um for a natural fluffy brow these are both so so good i'm just going to give a caveat here that i might have some honorable mentions that i'm not really going to talk about but definitely an honorable mention to all the charlotte tilbury i've tried all four brow products this year and those were really good as well i almost talked about all of them but this video is too long to talk about six brow products so i'm just going to say that as well on to primers i didn't really try any new primers this year a, because I was really more diligent with my SPF and a lot of times my SPF would be my primer because I would have just applied that before applying makeup. Um, I still love the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is still my home girl as far as like a glowy base is concerned that gives you some moisture as well. But this is kind of cheating because this was a 2020 favorite as well. This came with me on every trip. I've raved about this in the past, but I this is the only repeat. I just have to say it again that I love this product. But the only new primer that I really fell in love with this year was the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enrich Face Base. So this, I just got a little mini in a tr like kind of try it set from Bobbi Brown. I just want to show you the texture there. I brought this with me on many trips this fall and I really fell in love with this primer. This tiny little jar has lasted me quite a few trips and it's only about half gone, but it has like a really thick, 
moisturizing texture and it really nourishes the skin without being greasy, uh, but it gives some lasting moisture to the skin, um, but it doesn't make you look too shiny. It just really like sets the skin and preps it for makeup. I was absolutely planning on buying a full size, but I actually just got a full size through Octoly, so it worked out really well. Here's what the full size looks like. It's definitely not a cheap primer, but they do have sets that go on sale. Um, there's different sales on it all the time, and I would highly, highly recommend this primer. Let's talk some concealers. So another category that I have more than one product, but each product serves a different purpose. My favorite overall concealer that I discovered this year was the e.l.f. Hydrating Camel Concealer. Um, you can see I've used about a third of this already. I was definitely late to the game on this concealer. It took me a long time to try it. Um, I have the shade Light Peach. This is just such a good concealer, especially for $6. And it's really um, hydrating as it says, but it's pretty thick and full coverage as well. A little tiny bit of this goes the longest way. I really like it for under my eyes, but they do have to be hydrated. I think that's just a me issue. My eyes do have to be hydrated anytime I wear a full coverage concealer, but this is just one I found myself reaching for over and over again after I purchased it. You cannot beat the price. It came with me on every trip this year. And for that reason, um, I love this concealer. Honorable mention to the Kosas Revealer Concealer, which I also am currently loving, but that's a newer addition. So I wanted to talk about something that I've had for longer. Another kind of concealing product that I used a ton this year is the Bobbi Brown Under Eye Corrector. Now this one is in the shade Light Bisque. And I purchased this when I got the little set with the face base in it. And I was just looking for something that I could just throw on a little bit quick and look a little more alive and it could be low maintenance. And that's exactly what this is. This has stayed in my everyday makeup bag that I have in my upstairs bathroom ever since, ever since I got it maybe six months ago. This is really thick. And this is definitely a peachy color, but it's actually perfect for my under eyes because my under eyes are a little bit on the bluer side and this peachy color really cancels that out. All I do is take a little tiny bit of this and just dab it in the inner corner of my under eye. It works well kind of sandwiched into a hydrating primer and a concealer or a foundation. Usually I just wear one or the other for work. And sometimes I just throw this on by itself to give my under eyes a little bit of life. And I'm wearing it right now under the e.l.f. concealer and it's just, it's just so good. And this will last me a really long time. I just have a small dip in it. And it's perfect for travel and just throwing in any little bag because this is a tiny little cute compact and I love it. The last concealer I need to mention has quickly become my favorite for spot concealing. It is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Everybody raves about this for spot concealing and they were not wrong. I got this during one of the last Sephora sales and this is the shade Light 2.5 Creme Brulee. I love this concealer. I cannot do my makeup routine without it ever since I got it. I just take a little bit on my finger and then dab it on whatever blemish like this just the smallest amount and I just dab it in. It can go under foundation, over foundation. It can be used to touch up. I wouldn't recommend it under the eyes because it's just too thick and drying for my personal preference, but for spot concealing, it's an absolute necessity and I don't think I can go without this concealer now. Now let's talk foundations, which is one of my absolute favorite categories. I tried a lot of foundations in the year 2021 because I just love good base products and I love testing new formulas. And one that definitely stood out the most to me is the Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. Bobbi Brown, I guess, is really a brand I fell in love with this past year. I did not purchase this. I ordered it through the Octoly app. I wasn't expecting much because it's not a new foundation. I have the shade Cool Ivory 1.25. This is supposed to be a soft matte foundation, so I was I had my reservations about it because I have dry skin and matte foundations don't often look great on me, but this it's amazing. It's medium to full coverage depending on how you apply it. I apply it with a brush. You can definitely build it up to full coverage. A little bit goes a really long way, but it does not look dry, matte, cakey. It's definitely a natural satin finish. It wears really well. This color is probably the best shade match I've ever found for myself. Bobbi Brown has really great shade options. I know they are a pricier brand, but if you can get this on sale, this is definitely my go-to like event 
makeup um, if I need something to last and I want just fuller glam. And I also love this mixed in with other products like the other foundation I'm going to mention which is the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Stay Naked Tinted Glow Hydrator. As far as lighter coverage tinted moisturizers are concerned, this has definitely been my favorite discovery in the last couple months. This was sent to me by Urban Decay, which is very exciting for me. And this color, um, which is light 30, it's a great shade match for me. And this is like a solid medium coverage. It's very, it's glowier than the Bobbi Brown with a little bit less coverage, um, but it's very like smoothing over the skin. It just looks beautiful. It's not gonna be as long wearing, but I, I like to bring these both on vacations and I can wear one or the other or mix them together depending on what I'm going for. If I want something a little bit lighter, that um, is still gonna look great and give me coverage, um, but just a little more glowy and hydrating, I'll go for this one. If I need something that's for like a night, a wedding, an event, a date night, I'll go for this. I love to mix and match and um, they both look amazing with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. If you haven't tried any of these products, they are all just amazing. Let's talk bronzer. So I really fell in love with cream bronzer over the past two years and I still love all the same cream bronzers that I did in 2020. I think my favorites were probably the Milk Baked Bronzer, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, and the Tower 28 Bronzer. Those are still some of my top bronzers but because they were favorites for 2020 I'm not going to repeat those. But there is one cream bronzer that I tried this year that really wowed me and it is the KVD Mod Con Gel Liquid Contour. That's a really long name, but you get the idea. This is the shade Light Medium Neutral 70. This stuff is amazing. I've raved about it before. It is a cream, like liquid bronzer. It comes with a doe foot applicator and it looks, it's one of those formulas that looks really pigmented when you first apply it and you're like, I think that's gonna be too much but it just blends out to be the most gorgeous color on your cheeks. The This shade um, is a perfect shade for me. It's not too warm, it's not too cool. I can really contour or bronze with it, and it can be built up um, depending on how pigmented you want it to look. I like to just dot it on my cheeks and then use my foundation brush to blend it out. It blends out super effortlessly. It's very similar in consistency and blendability to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. But the nice thing about this one, even though it is a little bit bulkier in packaging, the Charlotte Tilbury has exploded on me uh, on trips and this obviously will not. So if you like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, you need to try this from KVD. It is just so so good haven't put it down since i got it one blush comes to mind for this year and it is the mac glow play blush and so natural here it is if you're not familiar with the mac glow play blushes they are kind of a creamy powder blush hybrid where it's it's kind of silky when you touch it. You can't apply it with a normal powder brush, but it's not a cream either. It's kind of a cushiony feeling when you feel the component there. I did not really think that this would be my type of blush because I historically like really pink and mauve type blushes, but this year I really fell into more of a nude blush. And this shade So Natural was sent to me in friend mail by my friend Madison on Instagram because she got more than one in her order. So that was really nice of her. And she knew I wanted to try out the shade. It's what I'm wearing on my cheeks right now. I like to apply this with a little stipple brush, specifically the e.l.f. airbrush stipple brush. It's just a couple bucks. And I take my brush in there, I just stipple it in, and then kind of dab it on my cheeks. This gives that glowy, almost cream um, blush look, but it's not really a cream. It lasts a lot longer. It really just smooths over pores and looks flawless. It's not glow, it's glowy, but not overly so. This is a blush that I cannot live without, specifically in this shade. I do have two other shades of this blush, but this So Natural shade is my absolute favorite. Do not underestimate a nude blush like I did for so long. Because I'm really fair and cool toned, the brown kind of pulls a pinkier on me anyways. And it just looks so nice with literally any look that I do. And I cannot go anywhere without this blush at this point. 
Honorable mention to the Phytosurgeon Skin Spark Blushes in the shades Smolder and Fume. These were definitely my favorite cream blushes of 2021. I discovered Phytosurgeons as a brand in 2021 and these blushes I have also not put down. It was really hard to pick a favorite. Um, when I want a little bit more warm nude of a blush, I go for Smolder. And when I want more of a pinky nude, I go for Fume. These are the most beautiful, moussey, blendable, yet pigmented blushes, and they last on the cheeks. They're in a small packaging, which I love, and they are pretty affordable, and I just love everything I've tried from Phytosurgeons. Highlight for me was hard because I found myself using a lot of the same highlights that I used in 2020, specifically Becca Moonstone. That's still one of my all-time favorites. I used the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter for a highlight a lot. And I recently discovered the Phytosurgeons Mirrored Moonlight. I had it for a while, but I really didn't it really didn't click how to use it till recently. And if I I think if it had clicked sooner, that would be my favorite. But the one I kept reaching for that I did purchase this year is this Nabla highlight. It's a skin glazing highlight in the shade Ozone. It's what I'm wearing right now. This is a beautiful, it can be blinding, but it really is a more glow from within formula. It's really finely milled and um, just super pretty on the cheeks. I always like how my highlight looks when I wear this. I love this packaging. Kind of reminds me of the clear packaging from Kosas and I, you can see, you can see I pretty much have a good dip in that and I really reach for this over and over. It really is the perfect champagne glow. It's not too gold, it's not too icy, it's not metallic at all, it's not um, duochrome. I'm really out of, I'm really over like the really metallic duochrome-y highlights. They're just not for me and this is just, it's just gorgeous and it's absolutely what I look for in a highlight. This past year I really didn't use a lot of powder. I didn't really purchase any powders. But I do want to mention the Kosas Cloud Set Powder in the shade Breezy. This was sent to me a few months ago and I really fell in love with it. But it is newer to me so I, I didn't want to cheat and say it but I think that this has slowly become a favorite and I have a mini of this that travels with me. And I just wanted to mention it because it's very finely milled. It does not take away the glow. It just sets everything down and takes away the shine and it smooths over your pores so so nicely. I, I highly recommend this powder. Let's move on to the fun part. Eyes and lips. Eyes and lips. I was thinking about what eyeshadows I wanted to include in this video and I really didn't purchase other than like the last month, which I'm not going to include what I bought on Black Friday. I didn't really purchase many eyeshadow palettes over the past year. It was really all about really small palettes and single shadows, so that's what I'm going to talk about. The shadows I really fell in love with are... Alright, let's try that again. The shadows I really fell in love with are the Kaja Bento Trios. I think that's what these are called. They're the Beauty Bento Eyeshadow Trios. They have a ton of different shades of these, and I have four. I started getting PR from Kaja this past year, and it really got me into these shades, and I fell in love with the formula. These all have three shades. Um, they have some mattes and shimmers. They came out with two all matte trios this past year, um, Velvet Dream and Neutral Moment. Uh, I love I love both of these. They're such good like little complimentary stacks for topper shades and cream shadows. I think that my favorite is probably Velvet Dream. It, they both have like a neutral kind of setting your lid shade on top. I really really love this peachy shade. It is like a peachy brown. I have it in my crease right now. It looks amazing on my skin tone. And then a warm brown. I also love Neutral Moment. It's just more of cool tone browns. There's a mid-toned cool brown which I also love and then a cool deeper brown. Like these are good anytime for any look and the formula is amazing. And then you guys already know I fell in love with the shade Smolder Season, which was part of their gift set. I'm hoping they make it permanent. Kaja, make it permanent. It was for their Superstars holiday gift set. The two, let me just, if you don't know, uh, okay, just look at those. And then there's a matte brown at the bottom. That's amazing. I am wearing the deeper brown on my lid right now top with something else that I'm going to talk about. I also have the shade Glowing Guava. 
I really like the shimmer in here, but they're a little, they come out a little bit red on the eyes, the last matte does. I wish this was a little more neutral or purpley, um, but the formula of this one's really nice too. I just, I had to talk about those because they're so compact, they're perfect for traveling, uh, to throw in your bag, and the formula is just amazing on these, and I really would like more shades. I also fell in love with matte cream shadows. I don't think I had ever used them before this year, but the two formulas that really, really have impressed me are the About Face Matte Fluid Eye Paint. So this is a shade cloned that um, I originally fell in love with. It's a warm brown. It comes with a doe foot applicator and I'll just swatch a little bit there for you. These are matte, but they don't dry down too fast. You really get some work time with them and this shade is just perfect. It can be a one and done shadow. You can really, you can use it as a liner. You can use it on top of powder shadow, underneath powder shadow. I just love these and I love the formula. I like it a lot because it reminds me of the Rare Beauty liquid eyeshadow that I fell in love with right in the beginning of the year. The shade of this is Nearly Rose and I really enjoy this formula, but I wish that Rare Beauty would come out with some more neutral shades. The reason I don't reach for this more is because it's so pink focused and a lot of that line is really pink even the nearly neutral shade is kind of like an apricot pink shade and I think if they would come out with a little bit more brown tone shades I would love that and I would definitely purchase these are super similar super similar in applicator um, I just prefer the shade a little bit better on the about face shadow I did I'm not sure where it is right now but I did get one more shade of the about face on Black Friday it's like a deep purpley mauve shade it's called Vintage Granada and I, I really do love these formulas equally I just love the shade of the about face better but these are my two favorite liquid shadows matte liquid shadows that I discovered you know I got to shout out some sparkly shadows the Urban Decay Moon Dust shadows how had I not tried these until this past year I finally bit the bullet because they were half off on one of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, and I have the shades Lithium and Space Cowboy. Lithium, do not be fooled by this. It looks a little silvery in the camera, and the description online says it's like a silvery shade, but it's really a bronze tone with silver reflect, like a neutral bronze with silver reflect. And I always see this one be the last one to go out of stock, but this one is underrated. And then, you know, everybody loves space cowboy it's like a beautiful topper pink topper sheen this one has a little more base pigment don't mind my nail this one has a little more base pigment lithium does than space cowboy but these just wowed me i'm wearing space cowboy on top of the kaja shadows right now i would like all the shades of these because these are absolutely stunning amazing they hit the light from every angle i wore both of these i think on my eyes to a wedding i had about two weeks ago and all the girls were like your eyes are so sparkly i love your eyeshadow and this is what was on my eyes as we transition to lips i have some products that really go for eyes lips anywhere that i just need to mention that I discovered this year the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencils. These are absolutely amazing. I have three shades Total Taupe, Versatile Chestnut, and Limitless Brown. I had Endless Cacao, which I loved, but I lost it and I need to repurchase it. But these are really good for anything. You can use them on your eyes, your lips, cheeks, wherever you f see fit. But usually I use them for either eyeliner or lip liner. Limitless Brown is a neutral brown that I have on as eyeliner right now and that's typically what I use it for. These apply really easily. You can blend them out as eyeliner. I love them for that. And then these other two I typically use for lip liners. If you've watched me at all, you know that I literally have not put Versatile Chestnut down at all. It is my go-to lip liner. As you can see, it's a lot shorter than the rest and I'm scared that they'll get rid of this and I won't know what lip liner to use. I actually need to sharp my, sharpen mine. But it's like a chestnut brown and I have, I have really deep lips so it just brings out like 
the fullness in my lips whenever I'm wearing a lighter nude and it just looks amazing. And then I also love Total Taupe when I want something a little bit cooler. And I actually found that I like this one better than Endless Cacao because it's a little more brown and a little less gray. But this is what I, I use this one more on like pale pink shades and I use this one more for like brown, more like warm neutrals. And these are, have been my go-tos. I really have not barely used any other lip liners this year. And I think I would really like to get more shades. I think I have Anywhere Caffeine on my list and um, wherever walnut is a really good brown i would just like all the all the browns blacks oh i have black too i just didn't use that one as much i have the black shade too i forgot to grab that but i like that one for eyeliner as well but these are the three that really stood out to me oh all of these three shades i would recommend i also forgot to mention that these apply better as lip liners than anything else even if you apply these over a glossy lip they still go on super smooth and easily and they are just so good. I'm really proud of myself for how I narrowed down my lipsticks and lip glosses. I only have four products, three formulas. Pretty good, right? The only lipstick I need to talk about, traditional lipstick, is Urban Decay What's Your Sign. They reformulated their Vice lipsticks in new packaging and new formulas. They sent this to me and it has become my favorite nude shade right now. I have this on right now with Versatile Chestnut and it's the perfect pinky brown nude. There it is right there. There's Versatile Chestnut. They just go together so well. It's so flattering on me. It's not too gray. It's not too brown. It has the perfect hint of pink that is flattering on my skin tone. This has came with me everywhere I go, every event, every vacation. This has been with me since I discovered it and quite a bit of this is gone for a lipstick. I am absolutely obsessed with it. Honorable mention to the YSL Rouge Volup Shine lipsticks. I tried out this shade, which is the shade Burnt Zellage 122 because I got it through Octoly. I would never have bought this for $38, okay? But then I tried it when it was gifted to me and I fell in love with this shade. It's like a burnty terracotta shade and the formula is just you just throw a lip liner on and throw this over it. It's shiny and balmy, but it gives you pigment like a lipstick and you don't need to apply anything underneath it. It smooths out your lip line, but it's thin and you can just like keep applying and it doesn't get goopy. And then I picked up another shade during the Sephora sale. This one was in a kit, but this is 44. Um, it's nude something, but this is more of a nude pink. This is not one, I don't know if it's my favorite. It's a little bit pinky for me. It's, it's more of like a baby pink pink. I wish it was a little more nude, but I do like this shade. I think this one is still my favorite. But this formula is to die for. The packaging is obviously amazing and heavy because it's YSL. Yeah, I kind of wish I didn't fall in love with these this year, but I did. We're to our last product, and it's only one lip gloss. I narrowed it down to one lip gloss. Do you know how hard that is? Do you know how many lip glosses I love? But this is the... Rowan Liquid Lip Balm in the shade Charlie. I am wearing it over the Makeup Forever Versatile Chestnut Liner and the What's Your Sign lipstick right now. This is gorgeous. It's the perfect nude brown pink. It smells like mint. It's, it's, it has enough pigment that it could be on its own, but it looks good over lipstick. It's not goopy. Before I re-put this on, it's about a third gone and that's the most I've used of any gloss this year. I obsessively wore this when we were in Ireland. It's like the perfect fall kind of deep nude. I really am a fan of a deep nude and yeah. This lip combo I'm wearing right now was probably my lip combo of the year and I wore Versatile Chestnut so much that when I type Versatile on my phone, Chestnut comes up as the next word suggestion. So if that tells you anything. Woo! That was long. I did take breaks to drink water because I have been blabbing for a really long time. I hope you enjoyed me talking about all my favorites of the year. I truly love every single product that I talked about so much and if you try any of them because of me, please let me know. I would love to know because I love finding good makeup for you guys to try and it was really fun narrowing down all my favorites for you guys. Keep an eye out for my next video which will be a favorites hair, body, skincare, all the other beauty categories. I'm going to try to fit them all in one. So keep an eye out for that. As always, make sure you subscribe before you leave, like this video, and we will see you in the next one. Bye!